Hello, uh, my name is Jose Chavez, and I'm a associate professor at the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at Colorado State University. And I'm participating in the Irrigation and Innovation Consortium with a project. And this project has to do with uh, using remote sensing to capture the crop uh, response to water and other inputs in, uh, in the production of evapotranspiration maps and then getting crop coefficients from them. The overall idea is to update uh, irrigation scheduling algorithms for deciding when to irrigate, like the well-known uh, WISE uh, irrigation schedule. We use different remote sensing approaches that are several algorithms. In this particular project, we are evaluating three different algorithms, uh, methods to estimate crop coefficients and evapotranspiration. One of them is based on the energy balance, and it's a one source energy balance. The other is based on reflectance only, reflectance based crop coefficients. And a third one that we will be evaluating is based just on temperature of the canopy of the plants. It's a, a stress-based coefficient. Those three different algorithms will produce besides crop coefficients, evapotranspiration rates that we will be evaluating with an array of tools. Graduate student, PhD student Edson Costofilio will be explaining how these uh, data is collected in the field. Hello, my name is Edson Costafilio. I'm a second year PhD student in the civil engineering department at Colorado State University. And I've been working with Dr. Jose Chavez and his team on the IEC project related to WISE. The data collection that we have here for the WISE project relies on three components, which is the remote sensing, the weather data, and the heat fluxes. So the remote sensing is basically relying on satellites and drone images with pixel size from 3 centimeters up to 3 meters and th those images are being calibrated using multispectral reflectance collected the weekly on a weekly basis using the MSR and also we have infrared thermometers to develop a pseudo thermal uh, layer for the thermal bed and those infrared thermometers are located at two stations in the fully irrigated field and one station in the deficit field. The weather data that we need is pretty much to feed the models uh, to provide estimates of ET and also reference ET. So that means we need uh, weather data based on wind speed, ambient temperature and the relative humidity on site and also at the weather station that we have installed in this uh, facility. The surface heat fluxes that we have to measure to feed the model and to compare our results are related to the, all the components of the surface energy balance, which means we are measuring net radiation, so heat flux, latent and sensible heat. Um, the net radiation and so heat flux data we are collecting at two stations in the fully irrigated field and also in one station at the deficit field. And they're pretty much uh, measuring the uh, the energy coming from the sun for the net radiation using net radiometers and we also have a pyranometer to provide solar radiation for the, for the fully irrigated and the soil heat flux uh, measurements are relying on the soil heat flux plate method so we installed two plates per station located at 8 centimeters depth and we're measuring this, the water content and soil temperature above it to estimate the storage uh, of heat in that layer to account for the differences uh, at the 8 centimeter depth. Now, I think that the key component for the surface uh, heat fluxes measurements that we have installed an ethical variance tower. And this system will provide us with uh, reliable measurements on a spatial average way for both latent heat and sensible heat fluxes. And the latent heat data will be used uh, to calculate measure ET from the radical variance so we can compare our estimates of ET from the surface energy balance and remote sensing approach uh, with uh, the estimates we have for the, the fully irrigated field. Now, uh, future implications for this project relies on using uh, WISE associated with remote sensing 
to provide better est estimates of ET so we can update the soil water balance and have better decision making tools for irrigation schedule. And the idea is not only to keep it in a, in a project located just for the IEC, but to bring it to the community. So the idea is to engage with local farmers and try to access bigger fields so we can collect better data and take more advantage of the covariance system so that people can really get to know and get familiar with the WISE 2 associated with also the remote sensing aspect. And that will probably lead to a more robust approach so that people can get familiar and then we can have better uh, applications for our models and our tools that's been developed at the IEC.